Yo, what's going on, everybody? Um, today we're gonna be reacting to how Mortal Kombat cheats against you by Asmund Gold. He, maybe he's reacting to it. I don't know. I just seen it in my feed. I wanted to watch it. We're gonna watch it. Let's watch it. This game cheats. Now, when it comes to arcade games, it's no secret they are designed there to take your money. The more quarters that you pump in, the more profit margin the manufacturer what? receives. And the best arcade games would really pull you in. I mean, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, you don't want people beating your game immediately. If you have an arcade machine, you kind of want to make some money off of them. By making you feel like that you were really good at the game in the first couple of stages and then flipping the script to really ramp up the difficulty. And no, that's not true. I was just bad at the game at every stage, but okay, yeah. I mean, true. True. Same. Yeah. In some cases, the game would outright cheat. In 1993, what? Midway would release a sequel to one of the most popular fighting games of all time. Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat 2 or MK... Yo, anyone remember this? Mortal Kombat 2 on the SNES? Good fucking game. Alright, I don't care what anyone says. Good game. Fight me. It's a good Mortal Kombat game. K2, as we will call it, was everything that the original arcade release had turned up to 11. Uh -huh. And went on to become one of the most successful arcade I never played it in the arcade. I only played it on the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis. I never played it on... Games ever released. Its success would... I didn't have extra quarters. Guarantee home console versions would release the following year on the Game Boy, Game Gear, Super NES, and Sega Genesis, releasing uh -huh. simultaneously on Mortal Tuesday, September the 13th, 1994. At the time, it was the best opening week of sales in video game history. That's because it's a good fucking game. There was no wokeness back then. Okay. With 2.5 million units sold. Mortal Kombat 2 was a massive success in the arcades. It grossed over $600 million in sales, with around 27,000 cabinets sold to arcades. 27, holy, that's a lot. That is a lot, actually, yeah, that's pretty wide. That's a, that's a lot. Oh my God. Operators, that is a staggering profit margin. The game once again would feature digitized graphics, which were a significant improvement over the original with that addictive Mortal Kombat gameplay, and of course, the blood, gore, and fatalities yeah. would also be a part of the game. But new updates good were introduced. Stuff. New fatalities, new stages, new characters. Looks Fans so wanted more Tim Mortal still. Kombat, and it MK2 delivered, like completely dominating fighter. both arcade and home sales. But we're not here to talk about the different versions of MK2. The fatalities? Instead, in this episode, there's one part of the game that I'm not a fan of that's absolutely infuriating, and that is the cheating AI. And this is probably a good part of why the game... I mean, I always said that shit as a kid. I was like, this fucking game's cheating. ...grossed so much money in the arcades. So it was literally rigged. MK2... Yes! That makes sense. ...would straight up cheat and perform moves instantly that any human player simply could not do given their reaction oh, time. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. That's bullshit. What? And the three frames of input delay. So let's take a closer look. It skipped frames? To show you what I'm talking about, if I launch the arcade version in MAME, and if I try an uppercut, you can see that the opponent, in this instance Raiden, counters my move and- What? That's complete and utter bullshit. And then performs uh -huh. a throw at exactly the same time. Sure. If we slow down the frames, you can see that I've clearly connected with him before he throws me. Yet, my move has been completely nullified. Mm -hmm. I, I knew it cheated, but I didn't know it was to this extent. But his throw is the one that lands. Right, or of course. Or another example, if I try to forward jump kick against Baraka, he immediately, without hesitation, skewers me every single time. And of course, there is no do way to move. cancel the move. He simply knows what I'm trying to do seemingly even before I've pulled So up. it's input reading. Yeah, um, I had this in Elden Ring. Yeah, I know all about this. Yeah, okay, so... Fucking piece of shit, I hate this. MK2 after True. 
to the first few rounds, jumping towards a CPU opponent uh -huh. is a death sentence that you should completely avoid. And this is true for all characters in the game. But what about sweeps? Check this one out against Katana. This looks to be perfectly wow. executed, right? No, nope, uh -huh. she just picks up the character and throws me. The what? game makes you believe that you're not a very good player. But in reality, what's happening is the game is actually cheating. Oh my God. So what exactly is going on here? The original Mortal Kombat release That's would insane. give you a few rounds to get warmed up and it didn't mm -hmm. feel this cheap. In MK2, however, the right. first round of the game seems like it's a bit of a warm-up round where you can essentially defeat an opponent pretty easily yeah. and most of your kicks and punches will connect without too much issue. But after that, the cheating AI will try to take victory from you every single round. Well, if mean, you didn't know any better, too. it almost feels like the AI knows your player movements as you're doing them and reacts. You mean uh, like a CPU would? during the same frame. Read your button. Yep. Th that's reading. because it does. If this is anything like the games now, like there are so many games that have input reading. Yes. As it turns out, this is exactly what happens. This is what's known as input reading. When fighting against a human opponent, the game's code will read your inputs mm -hmm. and react to them instantly. Yep. Now to be fair, MK2 isn't the only game that has input reading. Many of them do. A lot but of it, it's yeah. what the AI does in response that makes the game incredibly cheap. Mm -hmm. So if you thought that you sucked at playing MK2, don't worry. The AI does everything to cheat against you. So as always, I wanted to learn more about the game and its AI from a That's technical crazy. perspective on how it works. Unfortunately, <laughs> the source code for MK2 is not available to look at, but I did stumble across the ultimate MK3 source code for the Sony PlayStation on GitHub, okay. which appears to be based on the original UMK3 arcade source. Okay. Now, disclaimer, it's not MK2, but UMK3 is also incredibly cheap, and it's highly likely... It's, I mean, like, if it worked the second time, they're going to do it again. Yeah, why not? It's taken also, they made a lot of money. From MK3 is one of the best Mortal Kombat games. MK2 of and applied it there. Now, before had, I concluded like, that, so though, many fatalities I did play a few rounds of UMK3 on MAME, and yes, after round one, the same issues occurs with uppercuts and jump kicks. Wow. UMK3 also introduced a combo system, and the AI can also unleash extremely fast combos that a human simply cannot do. I wonder why. Wow, look at that. So we know how the AI game wins again. And we know that this is a big source of frustration Wild. for many a MK2 player from the beginner, mm -hmm. novice, all the way up to the experienced player. But let's try to understand how the game cheats and what exactly is going on. Now, before we okay. dive into the okay. code, it's important to know some terms that are used in the game. When it comes to midway games, the term drone is used to describe a computer opponent. Okay, the I didn't MK know that. drone.c file handles all the AI for a drone and each of their corresponding characters in the game. The AI itself is pretty basic. Internally, the code will use a variable known as diff, and this stores the current difficulty of the game. This value then is used in a random number chance that the computer AI will react to your move. Note that this variable diff is internal, and it's not the same as the actual difficulty level of the game in the machine's dip switch mm. settings. Okay. Now this is specific UMK3 code, but for the first three matches, the diff variable will increase by one. And if okay, so like, if you're losing, it makes the game easier. If you're winning, it just keeps drastically increasing the difficulty until you cannot win. If you make it to the fourth round in the ladder. One, 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 two, three, yep then diff will increase by an additional two. And if you make it to the fifth round and beyond, diff will increase by an additional three. The highest value diff can be is nine. The variable diff controls how the AI reacts in the game. Mm -hmm. It also will help the player in certain scenarios. For example, if the player loses three matches- That's what I was saying. That's what I just said. ...in a row, then the diff variable is decreased it de by it, one. It decreases. Making the next game should the player decide to pump in more quarters into the arcade cabinet, a little easier. What? Oh Is my brain god! about to explode? What the hell? It's... It's a fucking scam! Dude, Asmin's fucking... 
Aswin's editors are so good. I can't believe it. Actually, I can, but it's just funny to see it. The term in the say. code that is used when a drone performs a counter is known as a reaction. And there are many scenarios where a drone will react to any move that the player is performing. The percentages of those I'm reactions so, uh, are based on a sliding I'm sorry scale. that my mouse keeps this moving. This variable here, I, my RT desk, underscore like... drone underscore reverse, is a list of values from mm -hmm. 0 to 900. If the difficulty is 6 then, then this value returned is 700. This value is okay. then passed to another function known as rand per. And this essentially is taking the value 700 and dividing it by 1000 which means that there is a 70% chance that in the second match on the ladder that a drone will react to your move. If you okay. manage to get to the fourth so match on RNG. the ladder, the difficulty is maxed at a 90% chance. And this is where the CPU AI really oh, starts to cheat. Okay. And so note that these drone reactions are performed within the same frame. This also That's helps... Insane. Yeah, there's just no way you're going to win. The only no, way you can beat something chance like you this win. is to bait it to, a ca uh, to, to attack and then attack backwards or attack based off of that because the way that you do the uh this is the way that like i see a lot of people that kind of cheese input reading is that they they understand the way it works and then they're able to play against it go ahead we need people like that explain on very very few occasions where an uppercut or a forward jump kick will actually land the cpu ai also checks to mm -hmm. see if you are spamming repeat moves and attempts to counter them. Note here in UMK3, as soon as I come in with a forward jump kick, the CPU immediately backs away so the kick won't connect. Yeah, it's just never and gonna this happen. repeats every single time. Oh, the diff variable okay. is what All drives right. the entire AI for the computer. Another function here, toss drone check, checks if the player can perform a throw. But the function react underscore expert underscore him is where the drone has a chance to react. Once again, based on that diff variable, if that okay. variable is set high, then the drone will react more often. Another thing to note is that the default difficulty on MK2 in the arcade is medium. You can adjust the dip switch settings difficulty to be as low as very easy, but this mm -hmm. is only delaying the inevitable. Essentially, the diff value will eventually. start out lower. Yeah but you'll always be at nine by the time <clears throat> that you progress to the bosses. Yeah, true. But even before the bosses, as you're fighting up the ladder, a diff value of six and well, above yeah, you're just will gonna... start to become very cheap in Jesus. the game. In order for the player so to beat the CPU, winning. it doesn't really take advantage of your skill. In general, if you spam jump back, the CPU will jump towards you to stay the distance and then simply perform a high kick. Given all this, I still love MK2 and I still rate well, it yeah, as it's the a best good game. That's what you have to do again. Yep, it's that simple. Series. But like many players back in the day, I felt like I was never good enough at the game or maybe that my reaction times were too slow. True. And while in yeah, you see this a lot of times with, um, like in Sekiro, so you see people Smash that, Brothers? like one example I can just think of off the top of my head yeah. is that like uh, uh, Ishin input reads you and so does Genichiro. They input read you whenever you heal and they go to stab I you. Know, I don't play so Souls what games. a lot of people that are doing uh, like a, a fast kill of them do is that I they go at a distance them, and then they myself. heal and that way they, they can bait the input read and then do a counter right off of that input read. So like a, a lot of people know how to do this. It's quite it's quite common. Instances that was true. Yeah, they're the masturbators. Is, the game simply makes it impossible to fight fair, and you just need to cheese through the stages to get to the end. Yeah, that's a shame. Uh, Godskin that's Duo is another example. That's actually a good point. Whenever you heal, they throw the fireball at you. You ever notice that? That fight always looked like it was super annoying, and I wouldn't. I would probably break a controller. As I feel like the gameplay and AI deserved something more advanced. But in conclusion, I will always have amazing memories of MK2. It was truly something special. Yeah, I, at least. me too. I had this game on the Super Nintendo and it was great. Back in 1993. And it's still one of my favorite arcade games of all time. Holy shit, dude. Like, I didn't even know this was a thing. What do you mean you didn't know it was a thing? I don't know, I'm gonna, you're just saying that to react at this point. Thing in like arcade games back then. I, I like my understanding. Oh, you didn't know input reading? Dude, input reading has been in video games since like Nintendo exists. 
understanding is I thought input reading was relatively new. I mean, yeah. I I'm sure if I went back and I thought about it, maybe other games had input reading back in the day. They did. But no, dude. Apparently, it's been games. around for a very, very long time. Holy shit, I had no idea. I'm pretty about sure, the like, stuff like Kid Icarus, uh... Games like that. Um, what is that one? Ghosts and Goblins probably has input reading in it. Let's give them a sub. Yeah, Modern Vintage Gamer. Give it a sub. Absolutely, I haven't seen it before. How much money did you get from your parents to spend at the arcade? I remember I would, uh, I would play, um, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. My parents wouldn't let me play at the arcade. This game? And then the my my favorite one was the Simpsons one. The Simpsons game was my absolute fucking favorite. I love that one. And I'm trying to think like I unfortunately didn't get to grow up with that kind of stuff. I only had a Super Nintendo and I had like two games. And it was Mortal Kombat 2, Super Metroid, and I think that's about it. Oh, uh, Super Mario World. Like there were probably a couple of other ones like driving games I played sometimes too. Like a handful of it. other ones as well. Yeah. Time Crisis. Well, I remember, I thought Time Crisis was expensive, so I didn't play that one. Yeah. Cruise in USA. Yeah. But then I got an N64. And I got Ocarina of Time. And that was my only game for a long time. That's a good game. Yeah, I even had Cruise in like, World or Cruise in USA for uh, my, uh, my Nintendo. I think it was Nintendo 64 at the time. Yeah. Fuck yeah, Nintendo 64! Time, it was a very different time. Like playing at CC's Pizza, like Mr. Gotti's, yeah, Gotti Town, something like that. It was amazing. Yeah. CC's Pizza was great back in the day. Alright, I'm gonna put the video in the description. And, um... Go follow Asmongold. You're probably already doing that, but, uh... Go do it again. And like the video if you like this, uh, subscribe, and uh, have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.